Hey, it's Jeff Muir at Meal Properties, and we are going to continue our series of uh, tutorial videos responding to frequently asked questions from clients or potential clients um, about how we manage our properties. And today we're going to talk about um, how we deal with late paying tenants. And um, this is, of course, a concern for everyone who is buying a investment property and having us manage it for them. What happens? What do we do if someone just stops paying rent? So we're going to walk through a few different documents here today. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. And the typical process with this is we like to reach out to tenants and try and work with them. You know, people go through different life issues and uh, they could lose their job, they could be affected by COVID, they could have any other number of issues that they're dealing with that, you know, interrupts their ability to pay rent. However, um, we are compassionate, but we do have a standard process that all of our property managers are trained on and that execute every month. Um, what will happen is, and all the documents that you're seeing here have uh, had the names changed on them, so these aren't real people, but these are real documents with the names changed. Um, what will happen is a couple days before the first of the month, we will charge people rent, and then if they have not paid their rent by, say, the third or fourth of the month, we will charge them a late fee of $50 if it's on a bill lease. And if uh, within a couple of days of that, they have not paid their rent, we will um, issue them a seven day notice. Now, before we do that, we will reach out to that tenant by email, by phone. Um, we may even drive by there. We might mail them something through the postal service. We will try and you know get in contact with them and work, work things out. But if that's not successful, we will issue a seven day notice. So every property manager who works for us just has set on their calendar um, every month to do a run a report and see who hasn't paid. You know, they will obviously have been the ones trying to communicate with the tenant and know what the situation is. If they don't pay, you know, at, after the late notice has been issued, we will issue a seven day notice. So this is what that looks like. And this is a legal notice that states what the amount owed is, you know, the date that we made these charges. And it just states that if you owe this rent, you must do one of the following within seven days. You either pay the rent or you vacate. Um, now, to be honest, most of the time, people don't just vacate after this. Sometimes they do, but typically this letter and this action will. Um, cause the tenant to get in touch with us. Um, if they haven't been paying their rent, then, um, you know, they've probably been not answering our phone calls, not answering our emails. This kind of thing typically gets them to get in touch with us. And then we can work out, you know, what they need to do. So we don't get into payment arrangements with people, you know, okay, you can pay this amount on this date and this amount on this date. We just say pay as much as you can as soon as you can and we'll deal with it from there. So if um, this doesn't do the job, the property managers will have set up on their calendar for eight days after this has been issued to get in touch with the tenant again. We'll make one more effort to, you know, get in touch with them, you know, get them paying. And if they don't make payment on that date, then what we'll do is we will file an eviction. Now I had someone call me a couple of months ago and they asked about hiring us to manage their properties. And I just always ask, you know, oh, hey, how did you hear about us? Well, this one person said, I ran a, you know, report on public documents through the state of Michigan um, in Wayne County to see who had filed the most evictions in the last 30 days. And you guys came up number two. So I had never really heard that before, um, but I thought that was interesting because it does just show that we 
have this system in place and that we routinely go through it and it does work. So um, one thing with uh, COVID and the way the courts are backed up right now, um, whereas maybe three years ago, you could get an eviction through in three or four months. Um, these days, it's more like six or nine months. So I like to be transparent with clients and potential clients about the fact that if someone doesn't pay the rent, we cannot just flip a switch and evict them the next month. It's a very long process and there's a lot of fees involved. Um, so we have all these procedures in place to try and mitigate that, you know, beforehand. And part of those procedures are, in addition to, you know, filing the seven day notice, um, we document everything in our system. And again, these names aren't real, um, but this is a real ledger here um, where we document all the history notes. So you can see when we created the account, when we started communicating with them, um, this person was with us quite a while. And you'll see here eventually where we filed the seven day notice and we filed the eviction packet. But we document everything so that if we ever do get in front of a judge on an eviction, we can say, hey, you know, we made all these efforts to try and work with this person and communicate with this person and come to an arrangement with them. Um, and they didn't respond to us. They never paid their rent. Part of the eviction packet would not only be these these history notes and the seven day notice, but also their transactions. So again, a real address, but a different name. And you can see everywhere we've charged rent. You can see everywhere payments have been made. And you can see where they got off the track. And that would trigger us, you know, filing the eviction. And then also what we do is um, we document the state of the property. So sometimes when we go through this process, they pay. Sometimes we do have to walk through the process of going through the courts, but we do meticulously document um, the state of the property. And more often than not, you know, someone who's in this kind of situation will, once they realize that we filed an eviction, they will walk out and leave the property looking something like this. And then we have to go in and, uh, apologies for these photos, we will have to go in and, you know, get this cleaned out. And send the, you know, person to collections, which, um, you know, looking at these transactions again, this person, you know, at the end of the day, owed almost $10,000. Now, if we send that to collections, they're obviously having some kind of crisis in life. Um, maybe six or nine months later, they might pay a portion of this, and we split that with the collection agency. So this is a bad situation, and it's, it's, it's not a common one, but this is kind of a worst case scenario. Um, so the point being, how do we handle people who, you know, stop paying their rent or get into a pattern of paying their rent late? Well, we have this procedure and all of our property managers are trained on it so that every month we charge the rent. If it's not paid, we charge a late fee. Um, if that's not taken care of within a few days, we file the seven day notice. If that doesn't get their attention and get them to pay, um, we document everything. We try and reach them again. Then we will file the eviction. Uh, we use Swiss Stack and Levine in the state of Michigan, which is one of the top ten tenant landlord uh, law firms. And we show up and we have all the documentation. And um, you know, people, if they're knowledgeable about the system and they've been through it before, they can potentially get it delayed, you know, month after month for two, three, four months. But eventually, um, we do get them. So this is kind of a worst case scenario. And again, 
most of the time, just the beginning procedures that I've outlined here, filing the seven day notice, just our outreach, gets things turned around. Um, but if that doesn't get things turned around, this is the process that we go through. So we have a very good record, you know, as evidenced by that phone call that I got, someone saying, I see you guys file a lot of evictions. We do file a lot of evictions. Most of them we don't have to go, you know, to the bitter end with because um, once we file it and they realize that they're going to be put out or they have to get out, they either pay or they move on and then we, you know, get it rented to a different type of tenant moving forward. So that is our little walkthrough on how we deal with late payers. And if you have any questions, please email me at jeff.muir at mobile.com. Um, and if you have any suggestions for other questions that you would like to be addressed in this video series, just let me know. And thanks for joining us today.